This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little... Or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. What we can do is we can learn from it. What the hell, Veronica? Are you kidding me? You want me to learn from it? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do want you to learn from it. Yeah, you want to know why? I don't want you to be imprisoned by it anymore. You deserve more. You don't deserve to be handcuffed to your past. Who the hell wants to sign up for that? Uh-uh, not on my watch. We are going to heal. Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. 
On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. How to heal after infidelity. A good amount of us think that this is absolutely impossible. Hell, I remember hearing so many women say, there is no chance in hell that I'm going to stay with my husband if he cheats on me. I would never do that. Like the women who stay with their husbands after they cheated on him, that's just absolutely ridiculous. And I remember so many women saying that. I remember so many hearing so many women say that. And shit, I'm going to be honest with you. I was there too. I was there where I said, yeah, if Willie cheats on me, that it's like done. It's over. There's no coming back from it. And yeah, that that's true if you both are not willing to do the work. But I'm going to tell you right now, no matter whether you stay with him, whether you leave him, either way, you have to do the work. You have to do the work. Otherwise, what ends up happening is we end up being imprisoned by the infidelity. We end up being prison, imprisoned by all of the emotions that come attached to that feeling, that feeling of betrayal, that feeling of, I don't want to say rejection, but yeah, it definitely fits because you do feel some form of rejection. You feel as if you're not enough. You feel as if, you know, you didn't make the cut. And so because you didn't make the cut, somebody else did. And that's a really ugly feeling, really, really ugly feeling. And it's one that I wish none of us had to endure. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little story, a quick story. It's a true story. So when Willie and I When Willie and I, we were about four years into our marriage. Willie's my husband. When Willie and I were about four years into our marriage, it was close to our anniversary, which just cut even deeper. But we were, he asked me for a separation. I'm like trying to go around it, but at the same time, I want to make sure I'm straight up. So yeah, he totally asked me for a separation. We were about four years into our marriage. And I remember feeling so devastated, frustrated, overwhelmed, all of the above. And I didn't know how to handle that. And I remember not only did he ask me for separation, but he also wanted a divorce. And so it was like, ah. And I remember in the beginning, I did everything I could to fight for my marriage. And I mean everything. I hate to say this. I Shit, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate to completely admit this, but I remember when he asked me for a divorce. I remember him coming over to the house Aaliyah was just born. So we, what was that? Aaliyah was born in August and we were, we were up for divorce or we were at least in talks of divorce in October. So she was only a couple months. What is that? August to September, September, October. Yeah. Two months, not even two full months. And I remember feeling so confused. So he came home to get all of his stuff. And I remember running to the car and parking my car right behind him to block him. I I swear to you. I swear to you. That's exactly what happened. And I'm totally embarrassed to say that. And at the same time, I've learned so much from that. So I blocked his car, ran upstairs, and I remember pleading to him, begging him to stay, literally begging him to stay, crying. He kept all of his uniforms in Aaliyah's room. So Aaliyah was in the crib. She had no idea what was going on. And I mean, she's a baby, right? And I'm there crying to him while he's gathering all of his clothes, all of his clothes. And I'm hoping that maybe he'll leave some clothes behind because that means he'll come back. And I remember feeling so confused, so frustrated, so overwhelmed I didn't know what to do. I wasn't enough. Duh. Of course, that's the answer. I wasn't enough. How could I be? If I was enough, his ass would stay. If I was enough, we wouldn't be having these problems. If I was enough, then I would have the answers. 
He ended up leaving. And I watched him leave because there was no way in hell I was moving my car. And I literally watched him inch his way out. And it was at, it was dark. And so he's like literally inching his way out. Have you ever seen the movie, um, what is it, Austin Powers? And you know that part where he's in the little cart? Oh, my gosh, I don't remember the actual movie. But it's one of Austin Powers' like big movies. And it's like a really, really big clip in the movie where he's like in this cart. And he tries to turn it around. And he's like back and forth, back and forth. Literally, that was Willie. So Willie was back and forth, inching his way out. And I was crying. Don't get me wrong. A little bit was hilarious. But all of it was definitely embarrassing because this is where I was. I remember, so we were, we were separated and on the verge of divorce in April, April is when I received my court papers and it had a date one month from that date that, um, I received the letter. And so I think our court date was like in May. I might be off with the dates, but just bear with me. And, um, I remember getting that letter and, I remember being devastated. By then, I had already done enough work on myself where it was like, screw it. If he's going to leave, he's going to leave. I changed my number. If you listen to my podcast episodes and you're familiar with my story, you'll see like there's this huge transition because I went from begging to, okay, well, this is it. I went from begging to learning to acceptance, like full acceptance where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Got a job, went back to school, started working on myself because if he was leaving and we were getting a divorce, well, then Aaliyah needed a better mom. And where I was in that moment was not a better mom. I was a devastated mom and I lost myself. So I did the work on myself, received the court papers. And then that same day that I received the court papers, Willie came home. He and I hadn't really talked. I changed my number and he was communicating through my mom to go ahead and get access with um, Aaliyah. I didn't want to deprive him at all. You know, he was a drill instructor during that time, and I wanted to make sure that he had complete access when he was free to her. Um, And so we made it happen that way. So we ended up um, having a conversation. We ended up reconciling, getting back together. And this is where it gets crazy. So I'm grocery shopping, right? Right. We're back together. Everything's great. We're back to this healthy marriage, happy marriage. And I had decided, you know what? There's no way in hell because by then I was already talking to another guy. I wasn't doing anything, girls. Don't go there. But I was already talking to another guy. And um, and I didn't know what he was doing. Obviously, I ended that relationship. It wasn't necessarily a relationship. I was just talking to him. But um, not kissing, none of that. Maybe I could, okay, maybe I kissed him once or twice. But that's as far as it went. That's as far as it went. But I remember, so he, he, when we, he came back and we had reconciled, we had both made the decision that there was no way in hell that we were going to talk about our pasts. And I was thankful for that because I was talking to guys and I was going out. So I was like, hell yeah, I ain't saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. And I didn't, in my, in my mind, I had imagined that Willie wasn't doing anything. Like, no, Willie, like most of my, most of my friends, when I told them we were getting a divorce, they were like, oh my God, Willie like loves and adores you. There's no way. And then I told them, no, dude, Willie totally asked for the divorce. They're like, what? No way. You're crazy. What the hell did you do? That's what I got from everybody. What did you do? So now fast forward to he and our back, we're reconciling, everything's good. Well, I go grocery shopping, and this might trigger you guys, so just be prepared. I go grocery shopping. As I'm grocery shopping, you know, I just had this funny feeling, but whatever, totally just like brushed it off, kept grocery shopping, ended up going home, and then I'm, you know, I'm unloading the truck. And as I'm unloading the truck, there's this little compartment on the bottom of my of Willie's SUV, right? And it's where like tools are or you can store things. I've never really looked through there ever, nor did I ever like want to. For some reason, for some reason, my gut was telling me to open those compartments. My gut was telling me. You guys ever get that really strong gut feeling like, you know, you know, something's up, you know, something's not right. So 
I went ahead and opened it. When I opened it, the, the first thing I saw was just pictures and a bunch of envelopes and it looked like mail. And so I, um, I grabbed it. I grabbed all the stuff that was in there. I grabbed that batch of papers and pictures. And the first picture was of me, um, on our first wedding day, me and Willie eloped to Vegas and we were such kids. We were like, I was 20 and he was 21. We stayed at Circus Circus. That's how young we were. Anyway, I digress. So I'm looking at this picture and it's a picture of me. Um, we were in Vegas. We were at like, um, I forgot there's like, it's not pirates of the Caribbean. I know that you guys can tell me later, but like, what is that pirates? There's like this casino that's like pirates. I cannot treasure Island, treasure Island. So we were walking through there and there's a bunch of pictures of pirates. And so there's one picture with his hand on his hip and he's making this like our face. Right. And his eye, he, he has a winked eye. And so I will, you know, I'm like, Willie, take a picture of me. And, um, he take, he took a picture of me and I'm like totally silly, but that was the first picture that's in this batch of paperwork. And then I'm like, oh my God, he had this. And like, I got all the warm and fuzzies because I was like, well, damn dude, I felt totally guilty because here I am, or here I was talking to other guys while he and I was separate. He and I were separated. I flipped over to the next page or the next picture. The next picture was actually on our wedding day. We had like, an, we eloped in Vegas and then we had a wedding day for our family. So the second picture was a close up and I mean close up. You can see nose hairs and everything, <laughs> but it was a close up of me looking at him when we were sharing, when we were exchanging vows. And I was like, oh my God, this man is so incredible. The entire time, it's like, this man was so incredible. Completely forgot that this man left my ass. Completely forgot that he wanted a divorce. All the things that he did. You guys would have to listen to the other episodes because his ass also closed my bank account. Listen to the episodes for that because that'll be a whole therapy session. We don't have time for that. But yeah, like, I'm thinking like all of those thoughts just went into focused on how great of a man he was. And then I flipped over to the next, which was a card. And that card was not a card from me. So I started to read it. And as I was reading, have you ever read something, but you're like so confused and you're like, you have to read it like 80 times because it's just not making sense at all. Like you're reading it and you're reading it. But like, as you're reading it, there's like all of these emotions that are coming up and they're real emotions and they're frustrating. Like you're just like heart is beating 50,000 miles per hour. Yeah. That's exactly what I was, hap- what was happening to me. We call it flooding. I'm going to teach you more about that in a minute. My thoughts started going crazy, racing. My emotions became overwhelming. My heart was pounding out of my chest because this woman was professing her love for my husband. And it was talking. It was like basically one of those cards where you it like says everything you want to say to somebody. And it's all written in like this card. And then, so it's all professionally written, right? By like Hallmark or whoever the hell wrote that damn card. <laughs> I'm still not bitter. <laughs> but yeah, it was all professionally written. And then I open it. And it finishes off, right, with whatever love, beautiful things it needed to say. And then on the bottom was her writing. And it was just saying how in love she was with Willie, how happy she was. I completely froze. Was my husband cheating on me? But then how is it cheating if we're separated? And then how maybe was I cheating on him? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't engage in any sexual activity with any men while my husband and I were divorced. But like reading this stuff, it was like, oh yeah, like they're not friends. They didn't just kiss. Like this is more than that. This is like a full on relationship. (sighs) And my heart dropped. I immediately picked up the phone and I called Willie and I called him. And I was like, he answered and he was, I said, I kid you not. I said, who is, and I'm going to change her name on purpose because it's just not fair altogether. Um, 
I asked him, who is Samantha? No hesitation, Willie said. I'm on my way. Mind you, Willie was on crucible. He was he was at the crucible. You're not allowed to answer your phone. You actually don't have any. So it was like his first day there at the crucible. For all my military mamas out there, you know what the crucible is. It's three days of hell. When you're a DI, that's you're taking the recruits for their graduation, right? <clears throat> that's like the last step before they graduate. No reception. They're out in the mountains doing some crazy ass training. So the minute I said, who is Samantha? He's like, I'm on my way. You're not allowed to leave. So I knew that this was something. So now I'm going to teach you how to heal from infidelity. A lot of people might say, that's not infidelity, Veronica. You guys weren't together at the time. Yeah, that might be true for you. But for me, we weren't divorced. And yeah, we might end up measuring, well, wait a minute. No, my husband actually cheated on me, you know, in our room, or my husband actually cheated on me, you know, while we were dating or whatever, whatever it is. It is very important for you and your partner to be able to have a conversation where you define cheating. For some of you, it might be cheating if your husband watches porn. For some of you, it might be cheating if they actually physically engage in sex. For some of you, it might be cheating if he's talking to a woman on social media. We all define cheating in different ways. It is important that both parties are very, very clear on what cheating is. Very, very clear on what cheating is. So flooding. Flooding is your response. It's that fight or flight response you automatically have when your emotions are getting the best of you. When you've encountered an issue in a relationship, an issue with your work colleague, an issue while you're hiking and all of a sudden see like a cougar or a mountain lion. I don't know what the hell type of animals are around when you're hiking, but I'm just saying, I'm just giving you guys some exaggerations. That's a fight or flight response. You are in flooding. All right. It is very important for you to recognize what that looks like prior to having this conversation. Because when you have your conversation with your partner, you have to make sure your emotions are in check. And you also want to be open to what they have to say without judgment or criticism. The passion is so low these days that I feel parenthood and other commitments are taking control. I want to feel like it's me he wants to spend time with. Yeah. I've said those exact words a hundred times to my friends after realizing that the man I said I do to wasn't the same person. Or was I just imagining it? But here's what I finally realized that changed things for me almost overnight. I started to use four simple and effective steps that changed our communication and connection for the better. As a licensed marriage and family therapist, I got excited and started showing my clients and they too were seeing changes instantly. Whether you've been married for one year or 15, these tips work and I can't wait to share them with you. Girl, I got you. I want to personally invite you to my live two-hour online workshop. This is for moms who have said, the empty promises just aggravate me so much. He says he will do something or take care of something, then he doesn't. Communication has always been a weak point for us. He says things without thinking. I try to logically work through things and he reacts emotionally. I try to say what I feel in a constructive manner. He takes it personally and attacks me. Boundaries are a confusing topic for me because I am a helper. I have this innate need to help anyone I can. So if this is you and you are ready to get off this hamster wheel, then allow me to guide you through this four step process. I can't wait to meet you personally. So again, this is a two hour live workshop. And for whatever reason, if you cannot attend, girl, I got you. This will be recorded, which means you will have lifetime access. This is for women only. If you are ready to go from roommates to lovers, then let's go ahead and step outside of our comfort zones together. Allow me to guide you. If you're ready, What I'd like you to do is go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Again, that is empoweredandunapologetic.com 
forward slash workshop. Get ready, mama, because we are about to do some work. So let's move on. When we've endured infidelity, research and studies show that women who have faced infidelity have similar traits of those that have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. They have similar traits. Similar traits being that they'll have flashbacks. They'll go by, they'll drive. I remember um, I remember when I started asking Willie about like what was going on and he shared openly about the relationship, what the relationship looked like, all of it. I even talked to her. Yes, ladies. Oh, hell yeah. You bet your butt I talked to her. We had a full conversation and everything. Um, it was a good conversation. It was a really, really good, healthy conversation. But I remember hearing like certain exits on where my husband lived during the time and when he was in a relationship with her. I'm going to tell you, I had to do a lot of personal work on when I passed that exit, my heart rate would increase. I would start to feel tight and tense. And it would remind me of when we had that discussion. It brought me back to the infidelity, right? That's where I was. So that's what I mean by women will display similar similar traits of those that struggle with PTSD. It is very important that you're mindful about that. So how do you heal after infidelity? It is very important to understand that the truth does not always come out on your first conversation. And I know and recognize that this is very hard to hear. I, I, I acknowledge that. And it's the truth. It's important to understand that, yeah, you're going to be infuriated. What happens is the truth starts to emerge slowly, very slowly. And it is important that you, if you are willing to work on this relationship, you identify on whether or not you need to seek individual or couples counseling. I'm going to tell you right now, it is very important for you to seek couples therapy. I know that's hard. I know the last thing you probably want to do is have a conversation with him and even hear what the hell happened. But I'm going to tell you what, with a professional it is going to be very much beneficial, especially if you decide to stay. And if you decide to stay, whatever your friends say, whatever your family say, they are not living your life. You are living your life. They're not going to bed. They're not going to bed with you. They're not enjoying certain moments with you. So it is very, very important that others, other people's opinion is not Yours does not influence your opinion. And it is very important that you seek professional help because I'm going to tell you right now, unless it's happened to you, you're going to be saying all day, oh, hell no, I would never be with him. The truth is we don't know. We don't know until it happens. Then it's when we make our own decisions. So this is very difficult. And again, it's a work in progress. I want you to understand this as well. The problems in the relationship did not cause the affair, but are very, very, very important, extremely important. And the reason why is because most of us go into criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and we even go into stonewalling. Those are the things that attribute to an unhealthy relationship. I'm not saying there are a reason for infidelity, but if you're showing up with disgust, contempt over and over with your partner and your partner doesn't know how to set boundaries and don't know how to speak up for themselves, yeah, other people's interest is going to be their interest. I'm not saying it's your fault. I just want you to recognize that when we're in un- when we're in unhealthy relationships, yeah, it's a little bit easier for people to stray. And I want you to know that. It is important also to go ahead and get to a place of acceptance. And this is where radical acceptance comes in. Radical acceptance is a dialectical behavioral um, therapeutic skill. It is one that Marsha Linehan um, created. 
So what is radical acceptance? Radical acceptance is when you stop fighting reality, stop responding with impulsive or destructive behaviors when things aren't going the way you want them to, and let go of bitterness that may be keeping you trapped in a cycle of suffering. Totally Googled that right now. But I think it's important for you guys to identify the, the um, or, or have the definition. So what, is, what does radical acceptance look like? Radical acceptance is when something completely unacceptable happened to you. It is unacceptable that there was infidelity. It is unacceptable that somebody stepped outside of the relationship. It is unacceptable that it was done in this manner, right? It was unacceptable that you would do that while I was pregnant, it is unacceptable, unacceptable. It is unacceptable that you would do that and introduce them to our kids. I've heard those stories as well. It is unacceptable. Yeah, you're right. It is unacceptable. So radical acceptance is accepting the unacceptable so that you are no longer imprisoned by it. Let me repeat that for those in the cheap seats. Radical acceptance is to heal you. It is accepting the unacceptable so you no longer are handcuffed, imprisoned by your pain. I'm going to tell you right now, I work with a lot of women and a lot of women stay very much stuck in not accepting what is already happening and living their life trying to change it. Let me give you some examples. Well, why the hell did you do that? What's wrong with you? Why would you do this? Nope, nope. That answer is not good enough. Give me a different one. Why couldn't you have done this? Why wasn't I enough? That right there is suffering. It is suffering. And suffering, my friend, is a choice. Acceptance. Acceptance is a path to change. Suffering is you continuously repeating over and over, refusing to accept something that's already happening. Write that down. And if your kids or somebody is distracting you, come back to me. Being able to accept something, recognizing that you can't go back in time and change it. Does it hurt? Absolutely. Do you wish something would change? Do you wish that this had never happened to you? Hell yeah, 100%. But the reality is we can't go back in time and change it. What we can do is we can learn from it. What the hell, Veronica? Are you kidding me? You want me to learn from it? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do want you to learn from it. Yeah, you want to know why? I don't want you to be imprisoned by it anymore. You deserve more. You don't deserve to be handcuffed to your past. Who the hell wants to sign up for that? Uh Uh-uh, not on my watch. We are going to heal. So when you're accepting something that is unacceptable, right? You are taking the information You are acknowledging your pain. You are acknowledging your frustrations. You are giving yourself time to heal. Okay? You are truly giving yourself time to heal. I want you to acknowledge that you may be handcuffed to your past. And if that's true, okay, we can do something about it. But I want you to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that there might be a feeling, something along the lines of, this should have never happened. I want you to be mindful of what this does to your body. Write it down. What emotions come up for you? What physical sensations come up for you? All right? Does your heart beat? Do you feel tight and tense anywhere? Okay? That's where I want you to go. And then next, I want you to learn from it. What can you learn from this? Veronica, I don't want to learn shit. I learned that my husband's a lying, cheating, you know, fill in the blank. Okay. And you want to be, go back with him. And he wants to work on the marriage. All right. So what do we do? What do we do? Because you complaining about it is you not accepting reality. What do you want to do? Well, I want to move on. I don't want this to haunt me. I want to heal. Okay. We can't keep on punishing him. Because you continuously punishing him is only putting your relationship back on the rocks. I'm not asking you to, you know, love and adore him. I'm not asking you to do that. But I want you to recognize that this is your part of the healing process, just like he's going to have to do his. What can you learn from it? Now, let me go back to my story. For me, I have learned 
that my relationship, my relationship that I thought was a hundred percent indestructible, nothing could, nothing, nothing at all could penetrate it at all. I learned that my, my relationship is a hundred percent vulnerable to not only infidelity, but to divorce. That was a very, very hard pill to swallow, but I had to learn that because it was very important if I was going to move forward in my relationship that I placed a high value on not only my marriage, but on myself. I had to show up as my best version of myself for me so that way I could connect and feel healed and not disconnect from my partner. That was really, really important. So I learned, I also learned, in addition to my relationship being vulnerable, what I had also learned was that I had compromised myself for so damn long and I resented him for it. I didn't even know that was happening. I had lost myself. How many women here have lost themselves in being a mom, lost themselves in being a wife, being all to everybody and leaving you with nothing? How many of you here have struggled with that? where you don't even know who the hell you are outside of all of the roles you play. I'm going to tell you right now, that was me. That was me, 100% me. I didn't even know it. It took this for me to realize it. My life was completely dependent on how much my husband valued me. My life was completely dependent on how I showed up in the house, how my house looked, right? My life was completely identified as being a mom and a wife. I didn't know who the hell I was. I was on this autopilot, like freaking hamster wheel. I didn't even realize it. And I didn't realize it until I started stepping outside of my comfort zones, comfort zone and truly accepting change. So what I learned from this is Veronica, you can endure a great amount of pain And it will not bring you down. You can endure a great amount of pain and come back 10 times better. And if I'm completely honest, Veronica, you can endure this pain and you could help thousands of women step outside of their damn comfort zone and get off that damn hamster wheel because you don't belong there. You never belonged there. You are going to do great things. You will do great things. And it was, it got to a point where it was like, it was no longer me asking, well, what the hell is going to be next? And I need to ask for permission to step outside of my comfort zone. It ended up changing to watch me, watch me. And I got to a place where I no longer needed my husband. And I know that sounds ugly. I'm aware of that. I know that sounds really ugly, but it's true. And I've said this to my husband when I started when I, st- when I um, opened up my private practice, it became very, very successful really, really fast. I mean, now, like I said, we have seven clinicians that work for, the, for my company and we're 100% referral based and all my clinicians are full. We're hiring. But not only did that happen, but also like I started opening up a second business, Empowered and Unapologetic. I started a podcast and it was like, holy crap, I am capable This entire time, I thought my story was there's no longer, there there is no possible way that I'm capable of doing great things. To now it's watch me. So ladies, you can heal from infidelity if you choose to. It is stepping outside of your comfort zone. It is allowing yourself to feel that pain. You are not going to go under with that pain. I'm going to tell you right now, you are not going to go under. The hardest part, the hardest part was you recognizing that it, that it's not going to, it's not going to take you under. The hardest part was even probably discovering that it had happened. I know that's what it was for me. Reading that damn card. I don't even know what the hell happened in that card. 
but reading that damn card after I, I, it felt like it was in a movie, you know, there's a picture of me and I'm like, oh my God, my husband's the best man in the world. And then another picture of me and it was like, oh my God, he literally got a total close up of me gazing into his eyes. Like it was obviously a photographer took that picture, but, and it was me in my wedding dress on my wedding day. You couldn't see my wedding dress. You could only see face, like face and a little bit of the crown that I had. Cause oh hell yeah, I was a diva on my, on my wedding day. <laughs> And then that card from some other chick that I don't even know. What? Mamas, you can endure a great amount of pain. You can definitely heal from infidelity. It is up to you. Radical acceptance. Accept the unacceptable. If you refuse this, I'm going to call you out right now. If you refuse this, then you are signing up. You are literally signing up, pen to paper, you are signing up for a life of imprisonment. And this not only goes for infidelity, it goes for anything else you will refuse to accept in life. You're refusing to accept something that's already happened. Remember, and I want you to hear me out. This is where I'm going to close out. Remember, acceptance does not equal forgiveness acceptance does not equal forgiveness. A good amount of you are like, oh girl, I already forgave him. We're good. And then the minute something comes up, it's like, oh, hell no. And you bring it back up. Uh Uh-uh, mama, you have not accepted it. You have not accepted it. Acceptance is recognizing that this, this moment, this incident, this infidelity has caused you a great amount of pain. Recognizing that you can't go back and change it. Learning from it and moving forward like the badass that you are. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking. 24 7 why we have no off switch and why we crave alcohol if you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is then i hope that you will check out the sober powered podcast new episodes every friday see you there i know i know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol i know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But 
what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today.